Hey everyone, welcome to Fighting Over the Card Catalog, a snarky look back on young adult novels of the 80s and 90s. I'm Jess. I'm Steven, and I'm here to make my wife happy. We're taking a journey to find out how many terrible and hopefully some not so terrible books from my youth I can get my husband to read before he reconsiders this whole marriage. Hi. Hello, my love. Hello, my love. Guess what? It's birthday week. It's birthday week. What up? <laughs> it's birthday week. And we're getting lots of new bookshelves. And we figured out my infusion date for my EMS stuff. And it's just a good, good day today. Except my Adventure Zone copy did not come. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing there was a problem at the printer or something that's making it delayed, and you're probably not the only one. Probably not, but I'm the saddest one. Huh. But it's supposed to arrive on my birthday, but, I mean, I wore my unicorn dress today, because it was Adventure Zone Day. Right. <laughs> Even though Geralt has not been introduced yet. Mm. Anyways, this is not fun for people who don't listen to the <laughs> Adventure Zone, but y'all, you should. It's amazing, and it'll make you cry and laugh. Feel all the emotion. Yeah, the weekend this weekend was very, very short. It was very short. Didn't seem like I had a weekend at all because no. we just worked all weekend. Although I did take a photography class. You did take a photography class. That I'm very, very excited nice. about it. And you already learned things in four already hours. So, as it is my birthday week, I wanted to read a book. That I had very fond yet fucked up memories of. And it's two-parter. Doing it this week, next week, to surround my birthday in the my sweet Audrina-ness of it all. Because she don't know time. (laughs) So yeah, this week we read My Sweet Audrina by V.C. Andrews, published in my birth year, 1982. Audrina Adair wanted so to be as good as her sister. She knew her father could not love her as much as he loved her sister. Her sister was so special, so perfect, and dead. Upstairs in the locked room were her sister's clothes and dolls, her animals and games, and her sacred rocking chair, which held the secret of all her sister's gifts. Now Audrina will rock and rock and claim those gifts. Now she will come face to face with the dangerous, terrifying secret that everyone knows. Everyone except my sweet Audrina. That was so good. Great job. (laughs) Okay. I mean, okay. We haven't really talked about it at all. Um, we listened to the audiobook together. The first part of the book. Um, there's three parts, but we just did this. The first part this weekend while we were putting together bookshelves and stuff. But you didn't talk much, so <laughs> I don't really know what you think about it. Um, well, there were several. Okay, so first off, some of the characters are really shitty. Shitty characters. Lots of shitty characters. There All of the things. characters are really shitty. Yeah. <laughs> Audrina herself, kind of neutral, except right. that the author has done something that I really hate in books, which is repeat himself, repeat herself <laughs> over and over again about some specific point. You mean like the like, second Audrina hates the first Audrina? Yes. I'll never be good enough. Dad will <laughs> never love me enough as, as the perfect Audrina, as the first Audrina, the perfect mm-hmm. Audrina. Agreed. Probably a dozen times. In oh, I wouldn't be section. surprised if it, if it weren't more than that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's why, you know, it's like I was telling your mom in our, in our Facebook conversation, that was kind of why I didn't like Catch-22 is because it kept repeating itself right. with themes over and over again. And, right. Um, so that got on my nerves. And then, I mean, there's... There hasn't been good character shit <laughs> in my mind. I mean, it's just, I guess the dialogue has been okay, pretty uh-huh. good, you know, with their 
putting each other down and oh they're real good at that <laughs> yeah and you know like her cousin or whoever it is to her you know she's just bad all the time to her all the time. me constantly everything she does is is against Audrina and Audrina like at times feels sorry for her and mm -hmm. and uh at times wants to try to get on her good side she's not having any of it mm -mm. no she's just everything is is constantly trying to fuck with audrina she's committed to the bit i mean she's even trying to like steal her father's affection away from her and yeah anything yeah so i don't know how to <laughs> i don't know how i would rate this yeah i don't think we should um Try rating it until you've heard the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. No. And I hope it goes somewhere other than where it's been going so far. Because it's, it's kind of depressing listening to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that the fucked up shit hasn't really begun uh, yet. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it gets buck wild. Yeah, I forget. I mean, it's important to set up everything. But I think this first part's kind of boring comparatively. Because, yeah, shit just goes wild in the rest of it. But, yeah, so I read this book. This These were, like, my middle school books and, like, early high school books. Yeah. I, I Was this targeted at young adults? Because it... Not originally. I was going to say, because it really shouldn't be. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, dog, no. But, okay, the display at Target with all those books, with all those... I mean, they had a ton. In like the mid nineties, um, with all those pretty keyhole covers with fucked up shit on the inside, oh man, I mean that's what drew me me to him oh. originally, and I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't the same for a lot of girls. Yeah, I mean it seems like most girls who read this were middle school, high school, and no, it wasn't originally intended for that, but that's who picked them up. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, I'm embarrassed by this, but uh, I was, I mean. I never intended to actually have children, but I was convinced for longer than I should have that I would name a daughter Audrina. Really? Yeah. I just thought it was a really pretty name. <laughs> but yeah, now I see how fucked up that would be. <laughs> like, here, take this. Let me show you where I got your name from. Uh-huh. <laughs> what? <laughs> but it's a pretty name. Yeah. I just have to keep the book from her. Forever. It's the only banned book in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to just do this shorter part of the book because I want to talk about B.C. Andrews herself. Have you, like, ever heard of her even before no. this? No. you never even seen her books anywhere? No. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Not of which I'm aware. This bitch. Okay. It's an interesting story. So... She didn't start writing until she was like, well, she might have been writing before, but she didn't write her first book that got picked up until she was like 56. She was also disabled um, and taken care of by her mother, who didn't like her books. She was very, very private, and it's like, we didn't really know much until like a BuzzFeed article came out 2015, I think? 2014. Um when, like, her family members finally agreed to a interview. Yeah, we didn't know exactly what caused her disability. It was either from a fall and or rheumatoid arthritis, but she was, like, disabled for most of her life. It, she was ambulatory, though, because she could stand to write at her typewriter. She had, like, she was, like, the original standing desk mm. person. So that was interesting. Yeah, all the articles about her say wheelchair-bound. We don't like that phrase. Because a wheelchair gives you freedom. You're not bound to it. Bound makes it sound like you're imprisoned in it or whatever. And it's not. Wheelchairs are great if you need one. They're the best. So, anyway. So, she wrote, have you heard of Flowers in the Attic? Yes. Yes? Okay, that was her first book. And it did turn into a series. Was that about a child abusive mother? or? A... Well, yeah. Yeah. And much more than that. Yeah. Yeah. There was a movie about it, 
I was going to say, maybe I've seen a movie. Um, the original one did not include all the things from the book. Uh, sure. But then Lifetime did it a few years ago. And it had Sabrina in it as Kathy. Mm. Karen and Shipka. And it did include the things, um, including all the incest. That's what the original did not. Oh. Yeah. But anyways, that was her first book. And yeah, you can tell she had mother issues through it and <laughs> through the rest of her books. But the really interesting thing is she only wrote seven books herself. She died in 1986 at 63. And so since then, it's been all of them have been written by a ghostwriter. Um, My Sweet Audrina is the only standalone, although now there's a sequel, apparently, that like came out in 16, but we don't count that. But all the other books are five book series. And I think she wrote the entire of the Darling Ganger. Gan- I can't say it. Darling Ganger. Darling Ganger. The Flowers in the Attic series. Probably was all written by her. Might have been finished by Ghostwriter Andrew Niederman. Um, but she only wrote the first two of the Castile series for sure. And My Sweet Audrina. Now that he's finally being interviewed, he's written 63 books under B.C. Andrews. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's like. A whole thing. I mean, I guess if it's making you money, bro. It's making them lots of money, bro. I mean, what did... <laughs> did they have book sightings or he's sitting there as V.C. Andrews? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no. It's really weird. It's like everybody knew. They didn't keep it a secret that she died in 86. Okay. But they also didn't say Andrew Needeman was writing these books. But everybody knew there was a ghostwriter. But for a long time, I think everybody was under the impression that she left more notes than she actually did. Mm. You know, like giving the structure for the rest of the story um, for the series and stuff that she'd at least started. But that seems to not actually be true. Really? Yeah. And then it wasn't that long ago when we finally found out who the ghostwriter was. Um, The series all follow like a very strict structure. It's always about a fucked up family, um, always terrible. Someone, usually the protagonist, has, and a good chance somebody else, actually, um, they always have a different parentage than what you're led to believe at the beginning. There's usually in- incest, almost always. i um, pretty sure there's always a rape. She had some issues surrounding sex, obviously, because she probably didn't have any i don't believe she had any romantic relationships so i mean the ideal and i mean there were a lot of there were a lot of movies around mm. so so if she was 56 in the 80s uh 78 or so let's see um she was born in 23 yeah, so 79, I think, is when uh, Flowers in the Attic came out. Yeah, there were a lot of movies coming out in the 70s with rape themes mm-hmm. and some with incest themes, and she might have got fascinated with those ideals or something. Yeah. I don't know. And especially with Audrina, there is such shame surrounding sex, and then especially rape and incest. Yeah. I mean, but just sex itself. I think she had at least gave the impression that she had an issue with. I, I think. mean, if she was if she was dependent on her mother, mm-hmm. um, then yeah, she probably did not just get to experience. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't imagine like having my entire life where somebody was looking over me and right and not able to experience. Or even look at and read about mm-hmm. um, yeah. sexuality. Yeah. Then it only comes from whatever small sources you do get. Right. And I bet there's a lot of churchiness. Because um, yeah. there's definitely like overbearing religious themes in other books. Yeah. Also, a major signature of hers is that she, the protagonists are always a Mary Sue. Like, they're always, like, strikingly beautiful, Mm. no matter how poor they are. They're usually a savant of some sort, 
like whether it's singing or dancing or something like that. They usually have or some like the mom intense in talent. Yeah. Where she was could have been a concert mm-hmm. pianist. Yeah. And then in the five book series, here's where it gets repetitive. You know kind of what's happening. The first book is about a poor, beautiful girl. The second book, The Poor Beautiful Girl, is rich through some change of circumstance. And she's usually still a teenager in that one. The third book, she's a rich, beautiful woman. And then beautiful offspring book for the fourth one. And then we go back and it's a prequel with usually like the grandmother um, and how she came to be evil because she's always evil in the other books. (laughs) Yeah, so that's like the full formula of P.C. Andrew books. I had not read all of them because they're still going. I read eight series, the first eight. And two of them were like small stories and then they all came together in one. So I don't really count those. So six. I read the first six. So yeah, that's your uh, B.C. Andrews rundown. Her real name was Cleo Virginia Andrews. Cleo? Cleo. Virginia. Not Virginia Cleo. No. So why is it B.C. and... I don't know, because, I mean, she was writing under a, it, it, it was her nom de plume. <laughs> okay. She wanted, uh, you know, I mean, hell, she's writing about incest and rape and shit, you know? It's like she wanted to hide it a little bit, <laughs> but not all the way. You know, I, you know, you know. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> this could be me, but you don't know. You don't me. know. Look, this bitch needs some mystery in her life, damn it. So I thought we'd just uh, go over the characters real quick since they're also like wound up from together from the very beginning. Um, so we start with Audrina Adele Adair. She's a narrator. She's unable to remember the first seven years of her life, but she's able to have psychic visions from her dead sister's life who died on her ninth. They had the same birthday but nine years apart because the first Audrina died. Second Audrina is described as very sensitive and very beautiful with violet eyes and long chameleon hair that like changes color. Damien is her father. He's a mysterious, tall, dark, and handsome, a stockbroker and super duper overprotective father. Uh, He's described as a dandy or a fop. Like he is like super into his looks and he will not allow Uh, like dirt under his fingernails or anything like that. He hates Vera, who we'll get to, and loves Audrina. And he fears growing old. Um, Women love him, men want to be him sort of thing. He's also weirdly obsessed with the Civil War um, because he's from the North and then moves to the South. Uh, Lucretia is the mom of Audrina. Her nickname is Lucky. Uh, She was a gifted pianist uh, who gave up her career when she got married, of course. She overindulges in chocolate, bourbon, and flirting, but means well. (laughs) I didn't write that. I got that from somewhere, but I liked it. (laughs) Um, Elsbeth, or Ellie, is uh, Lucretia's sister and Vera's mother. And this bitch is addicted to her portable TV, um, watching all her soap operas and shit. And she's a former school teacher. In charge of Audrina's education, at which she either really sucks or is super sabotaging of it because Audrina is dumb as hell when it comes to like any logical deduction skills or anything. <laughs> but like, man, she hates men. Um, I'm going to call some hmm. of it straight on feminism, but mostly not really kind of scary. But she says things like, Don't judge women by what you see in paintings and statues. Judge them only by what you yourself know about the woman in your about the women in your life. The day any man understands any woman will be the day the world comes to an end. (laughs) Men are hateful, contrary creatures who say they want goddesses to put on pedestals. Once they have them up there, they rip off the halo, tear off the gown, slice off the wings so they can't fly, and then kick the pedestal away so the woman falls at his feet. And he can scream out as he kicks her, Tramp! Or worse. Yeah. That's she's, some issues. Yeah, she's had some not-so-good men in her life. Yeah. 
So then we get to our wonderful, sweet <laughs> Vera. Um, she is Elspeth's daughter, and thus Audrina's cousin. She's described as both conniving and mean, yet delicate and vulnerable to injuries. She has like brittle bone disease, which is actually called osteogenesis imperfecta. But she breaks like her leg four times, her arm twice, um, four ribs. Like if she falls, she's going to break something basically. Um, But she gets lots of pity for that. So it kind of works out for her. She has long apricot hair and pale skin and dark eyes. But, yeah, she totally sees Audrina as a rival. Um, First for Damien's attention and then a boy's later on. Um, And also, she liked to fuck with people's perception of her age. Um, She'd tell them she was 10 or 12 or 15 or even 20 and mix it all up. She reminded me of Mr. Glass. You know yeah, who that is. I do. From Unbreakable? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. She is also really, really interested in sex. Yeah, and... like she's fascinated by it. She mm-hmm. takes an anatomy book around with her all the time, and she's always making little paper dolls. And mm-hmm. and she likes to uh, tease Audrina because Audrina's uncomfortableness and naivete about sex and stuff. Yeah. So the first perfect Audrina was like killed while she was being raped. Mm -hmm. And she keeps telling this Audrina that she's going to get raped too. Super cool, Vera. Yeah, like she's constantly (laughs) telling her that. Anyway, she's a delight. Like she did this just so Audrina would get caught by Damien. Um, She brought her a bag of stuff and Audrina says, I couldn't believe my eyes when I picked them up and started to separate them. Staring all the time at pictures that showed naked men and women in lewd, weird embraces. The hateful things clung to my fingers, so tacky I plucked them free from one hand, only to find them sticking to the other. So yeah, she made sure she would get caught with that. And uh, yeah, Vera's just super dope. (laughs) I mean, but like I said, she commits to who she is. Everything she does wrong, she blames on Audrey. I'm like, at this point, why does her dad believe anything she says when she says it's Audrina's fault? I think because it's... Because every single thing she blames on Audrina. Whether he knows, whether he has seen it with his own eyes and knows it or not. Mm-hmm. Well, this entire everything. book is like a perfect example of gaslighting, the entire thing. So she's doing a bit of gaslighting on Damien as well. But I think the reason why he will believe her sometimes is because he is the only one that she will sometimes act sweet to and look up to. He's obviously a classic narcissist, so he will be drawn to that. Even though Audrina loves him too, you know, the more the better. Another thing about B.C. Andrew's books, and probably why I like this one the best, is their settings. There is like always a big, beautiful house. Well, when somebody gets rich or in this one, starting with it. And I like this one the best. It's a big, huge Victorian with lots of stained glass windows and a cupola. (laughs) So that's one of those words that I, I, there was a hashtag on Twitter about it just last week talking about how, you know, words that you'd only ever read and you didn't know you were saying them wrong in your head. Yeah. Um, So I had always pronounced cupola as cupola i think yeah i did a cupola yeah um but yeah we were listening to the audiobook and yeah cupola so anyways it's very romantic the house and yeah i love it the very first sentence in the book is there was something strange about the house where i grew up there were shadows in the corners and whispers on the stairs and time was out as irrelevant as honesty That's a lot in an opening sentence, but okay. (laughs) So, Audrina claims she is seven years old when the book opens in 71. Although it's revealed um, that Audrina's memory is unstable to say the least. Unreliable. 
Yeah, she doesn't know what day it is most of the time. Not only that, but she'll like, something will have happened and she'll start talking about it being yesterday and somebody will be like, That was months ago. Uh, we haven't had a delivery person here for so for two months. Mm-hmm. Even and, though she swears it was yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And so she's obviously has some issues with memory. Yeah. And the family, like, they take special care to keep her unaware of precise dates. Um, and I mean, like, even the months. Um, the only real date she knows is that September 9th, her birthday, and Aud- the first Audrina's birth and death day. But she's never sure when it's coming up. And yeah, so she's like confused about the passage of time always. And that leads Vera to mock her for being insane. (laughs) And they're not even days, but like down to minutes and shit. The grandfather clocks in the halls chimed out at different hours. The cuckoos and their wooden Swiss Swiss clocks popped in and out of small ornate doors, each contradicting all the others. The fancy French clock in my parents' bedroom had stopped long long ago at midnight or noon and a chinese clock ran backwards to my great distress though i searched everywhere there were no calendars in our house not even old ones so yeah it's pretty obvious that like they want to make sure she doesn't know anything related to time yeah her father says it's because he's convinced that audrina walks in her own time space so the first audrina was raped, spoiled, and they spoiled her in some indescribable way, and she was murdered in the woods under a golden rain tree, which, to, like, my 13-year-old self, I completely got confused with golden showers. Did you look up golden showers? I feel like I already knew what it was. Oh. Um, but, yeah, so I thought that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all that on what would have been her ninth birthday. And how old were you when you read these? I mean, 12, 13, <laughs> Defo Middle School. Um, and then reread them, like, throughout high school. <laughs> so her dad, Damien, tells her stories about the first and best Audrina and convinces younger Audrina that um, through a process of, like, self-hypnosis while being in... Uh, the first Audrina's dope as fuck room. She had all this cool shit and toys and everything that second Audrina does not have. But she also had a rocking chair. So she gets sent in there to rock in the chair and like get hypnotized, self-hypnotized. So she can gain all of the first Audrina's memories and become just as beloved and special as her dead sister. Her dad tells her, well, with his arm around my shoulders, he explained again. That he only wanted to give me confidence in myself. There's magic to be had in that chair, Audrina. I do love you for what you are. I just want to give you a little extra something that she no longer needs. If you can use what she used to have, why not? Then your Swiss cheese memory would fill to overflowing and I'd rejoice for you. And he gets really creepy. Um, standing outside the door. He's all, rock, Audrina, rock, ordered Papa. Make the floorboards creak. Make the gray mists come. Watch the walls dissolve. Hear the wind chimes tinkle. Is this why I hate wind chimes? I don't know. Is it? Is it? (laughs) I mean, I just thought it's because they irritated me, but maybe it is this. Uh But hey, don't tell your mom. Because otherwise, every time we come, she'll take them all down. Yeah. 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 Like she does with cabbage <laughs> i once offhandedly said i hate the smell of cabbage she was like oh i was gonna make that and then like three times since then she's like oh, i was gonna make cabbage but y'all were coming and i know jess doesn't like it <laughs> so, <laughs> like, oh my god so don't ever tell her i don't like something unless i really don't want it around but i don't know what that would be i wish she would just make some damn cabbage <laughs> <laughs> anyway she's got a ton of wind chimes but it's fine. I can go and stay there without freaking out. It's Anyway, Damien also tells Audrina that your mother loves me. I know that. But she doesn't believe in me. 
Okay. Now that my first Audrina is gone, I'm depending on you to give me what's made me feel clean and wonderful. Needed me as she needed me. Huh. What the ever loving fuck, my dude. Not only is it wrong for you to be trying to get this Audrina to be that way, it was wrong for you to feel that way about the first Audrina. Like, I'm sorry, your daughter should not be making you feel clean and wonderful. <laughs> That's, no. Does your daughter make you feel clean and wonderful? <laughs> I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I mean, wonderful at times. But sure. What does it mean to, for your daughter to make you feel clean? I don't know. <laughs> what is <laughs> that? <laughs> I don't understand. Like, pure? Was she giving him a bath? You know, they do talk. <laughs> they do talk about like how his one imperfection is his um toenails are like really thick and gross. <laughs> and so I'm wondering if like she took care of that for yeah, him. Yeah, maybe she cleaned his toenails. Maybe, God, that's disgusting. Okay. <laughs> Either way, that's all bad. Although my ex father in law also had that. And my sister in law would go after them with a Dremel for him. Um oh. but she was a nurse. So it wasn't. Well, as I mean, weird. that's what we do with the dog's claws. Basically. Yeah, right. Right. So that's that whole setup. Disturbing setup. So Audrina lives in virtual isolation, not allowed to go to school, although Vera is. And her only real contact with the outside world is Vera, who despises her. She says Audrina like stole her place with from Damien um, with his affection and all. And that the second and worst Audrina will never be as special or wonderful as the first and best Audrina. So from that, never forget, second Audrina hates the first Audrina. So like as we were saying before, Vera just like proves early on that she'll stop at nothing to take anything Audrina loves. She's a habitual liar and just a damn delight all around. So this is my favorite part of the book, I think, is tea time. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was all right. Um, so <laughs> but I couldn't tell. I mean, d was there a real ghost sitting in the tea times? I don't. No, it was her picture. Okay. Okay. So once a week, Elspeth and but it was like acting like she was talking, wasn't it? No, or was I just? I guess it up? was pretty hard to uh, understand that with the audio book. Were they? Were they saying things yes. that she would have said? Yeah. So here's the deal. Once a week, um, Elizabeth and I'm just going to call her Lucky. I like it better. Um, dress up uh, for tea time with their aunt. Uh, what's her name? What's her name? Uh, Mercy Marie. Now Mercy Marie is dead, but they have her portrait um, in a big silver frame that they put up on like the music stand of the piano. And yes, they talk for her, both of them. And they talk shit through her about each other and about everything. Like, Ellie will have um, Aunt Mercy Marie tell Lucky how shitty she is. <laughs> and the other way around. This whole chapter is like so much exposition, though. But I mean, I guess it's a good way to do it. It's probably the best way to do it. Because it's just so fucked up. Oh, and they get drunk whilst doing so as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, like, I've seen, like, tea time-like interactions uh -huh. with rich people in uh -huh. a lot of books and movies. And they do these things where they do a, a, you know, they put people down, but they do it without actually coming out and putting right. them down. Right. And that's what it kind of reminded me of yeah like a backhanded compliments type and yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but they do it for speaking as someone else so they're not really saying it mm. wink wink nudge nudge um which i think is pretty great it's not healthy but it, it i love it <laughs> at first i was wondering are they trying to teach her how to do that how to be in a social setting and Oh, to teach Audrina? Yeah, yeah, and be able to put down. But after, I mean, maybe after, after several of them, it got to where I. It just seems like they don't like each other, and they just right. want to hurt each other. Right, and every this is Tuesday. like 
um, not actually healthy, but probably the healthiest way for them to get all that out because they're also isolated. And it reminds in this me of, of together. Audrina and her cousin and how they right how they would be, you know. Yeah. So when Audrina is apparently eight, um, this groundskeeper cottage in the woods behind where they let live um, is rented out to Arden Lowe and his mother, Billy. B-I-L-L-I-E, by the way. It's very uh. cute. So Arden is supposedly Vera's boyfriend. Vera has told her about him and showed her how he gave her this box of chocolates and he's kissed her and all this stuff. But when Audrina finally does meet him, which she's not supposed to be doing, don't forget, she's not allowed in the woods at all, but she had cur- she was all curious, and I don't blame her. Yeah, once they finally talk, he's like, you know, I think it was pretty rude of you to uh, not send me a thank you note for the chocolates and note I sent you. And she's like, what? That was for me? But Vera took those and said it was for her. So, yeah, so apparently he's been seeing her every week at church. That's the one thing they do do. They go to church, and then they visit the first Audrina's grave. Even the second Audrina hates the first Audrina. So, like, she's been seen about town, and apparently Arden just, like, fell in love with her and thinks she's so beautiful Hmm. and sent her chocolates and this lovely note. The girl with the hair that changes colors. Yes. Billy is wonderful and so sweet. Um, but Audrina never sees her out of the house, and she never goes in the house. Um, Audrina only sees her through a window. She doesn't really ever question it. And so, yeah, Audrina ends up going back there a lot, even though she's scared of the woods. Yeah, it's not really the forbidden part of the woods, but she still is not really supposed to be there. No, she's not supposed to be in the woods at all. Um, but it's not the golden rain tree part, but... It's not the around. shower's tree. Exactly. <laughs> but Vera, of course, figures out that she's doing this. And she ends up always following her, unless she has cramps. <laughs> Otherwise, um, they're like perfect summer days. They did like picnics and all this stuff. And one day, they're fishing. Um, Arden's teaching them how to fish, and they're in their bathing suits. And when they're done, Audrina goes to change back into her dress and Vera has swiped her clothes and then gets her bathing suit once Audrina's taken it off and she also takes Arden's clothes um and of course Damien comes along right then and obviously freaks the fuck out as any father would I mean I don't blame him for being upset about that a little bit although apparently she is just eight but still Mm. yeah and he like throws his jacket on Audrina and like Freaks out and gets mad at Arden, even though they both try to explain, but he's not listening to it. So he, like, drags her off to the golden shower tree and, you know, like, tells her about how Audrina, the first Audrina, was raped there and tells her all about it. And second Audrina still hates the first Audrina. Mm. And then he takes her to her grave and he says... There she lies, my first Audrina, that wonderful, special Audrina, who used to look up to me as if I were God. She trusted me, believed in me, had faith in me. In all my life, I never had another who gave me that kind of unquestioning love. But God chose to take her from me and replace her with you. There must be some meaning in all this. Hmm. It's up to you to make her death meaningful. (laughs) I cannot bear to live with the knowledge that she may have died in vain. Audrina, you have to take on all the gifts of your dead sister, or I'm sure God will be angered, just as I am angered. You don't love me enough to believe I am doing the very best I can to protect you from the very thing that happened to her. And certainly you must have learned from the rocking chair about the boys in the woods on the day she died. So yeah, there's all sorts of shit on this. There's the... I mean, I don't, the, the sex shamey. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's I mean, not exactly I'll... that, but it is, I guess it's the, you know, like shame for, you know, losing her pureness, um, along with being murdered. And then there's the, um, gaslighting and then there's the God complex of Damien. And it's just like, wow, cool, and, cool, cool. And they keep telling her, 
that she always listened to him, always listened to him. Mm -hmm. But this one time that she didn't listen to him, right. that's she got raped and murdered. So exactly. you got to listen to me every single time every or you're going to get raped and murdered. Yeah. So cool. Good yeah. parenting. But it makes you understand why the second Audrina hates the first Audrina so much. <laughs> Did you forget that? Because she'll tell you. Yeah. Over <laughs> and over again. But Audrina actually strikes like a deal with him. She agrees to do whatever he says um, and never go near the golden shower tree and all this as long as she can still visit Arden and Billy. And Damien actually agrees. He says, you can visit that boy and his mother once a week as long as you keep Vera with you and make that boy escort you through the woods and never go there after dark or on a rainy day. That was another big thing. I forgot about, uh -huh. is that it was also raining on Rape Murder Day. Um, and it's just very important not to go out in it, apparently. It's also very important to remember the second Audrina hates the first Audrina. So, meanwhile, Lucretia, lucky, has gotten pregnant again. And, weirdly, uh, the family calls up this woman, a psychic, to come and predict the baby's sex. Because uh, you know having a boy is important to Damien. But they're horrified when the woman predicts the child is neither male nor fe female. Oh, no. Ugh. And Vera, like, calmly states that it's fitting that a new freak should join the family. That's gross. Intersex people are completely valid. So, yeah, she did this by, like, putting a ring on a string and waving it over Lucky's belly. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, yes, this is very scientific and yep. good. Great job. It's now Audrina's ninth birthday, September 9th. And Lucretia is six months pregnant, but goes into early labor and shockingly dies in childbirth. The baby lives. Um, she's a girl, and they have named her Sylvia. But, yeah, she's still so tiny that she can't come home and is stuck in the hospital. And Audrina can't go visit her because she's too young and she carries germs, you know. Second Audrina still hates first Audrina. Especially now because it's like this day is like double cursed. At the funeral, <laughs> Damien explains that he wants to lie when I am dead between my wife and my daughter. Mm -hmm. And Audrina asks, well, where will I lie, Papa? I asked with pain in my heart that must have shone from my eyes. Even in death, I didn't really belong anywhere. You'll know your place sooner or later, he answered in mm -hmm. a tight voice. Whoa, my dude. Yep. Whoa. And no, she still hates the first Audrina. <laughs> but I'm going to sex shame you your entire life. Yeah, so. yeah. So, while at the funeral, um, they get into a fight because Audrina's pretty much like at a breaking point fair enough and she t tells him she's gonna go to new york and get out of there and become a pianist just like her mother had wanted and damien says that's bullshit and that like she's never even had a piano lesson what is she talking about this is dumb and obviously you're not leaving but in all this grief at least damien forgets about the chair and the creepy ass walking walking rocking but Audrina decides to go in herself one night, and she sees in her head all these memories of her mother that are really sweet, but one, she's giving her piano lessons, and she says, it had been my mother's desire to see me take her place and find the career love has stolen from her. I mean, that's quite a conclusion to make from one yeah. little vision memory of a piano lesson, but... Okay, Audrina, go on with yourself. And so aside from remembering that the second Audrina hates the first Audrina, that's the end of part one. Thank you. Thank you for being the end. <laughs> of part one. Of part one. So do you have any theories about what's happening or going to happen? or? Um, is she like a zombie? That's a dope-ass theory that I love. Yes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> did they do a black magic um like soul swap from the original into a, a new baby <laughs> i'm not going to confirm or deny anything 
because I do just want you to uh, enjoy it. Is <laughs> it, okay? So is the dad going to end up like getting with the cousin? Possibly. <laughs> I'm not. I, I. I don't know how to not. I will neither confirm nor deny. I will deny. neither confirm or deny. But <laughs> this is an audio medium, so I have to say something. All right. <laughs> Otherwise, you're still reading Fall by Neil Stevenson. Y'all, he's so tired at night. He reads like what, maybe last five night, pages last, last night. night <laughs> A page. Yeah. And I was done. Yeah. yeah. I was like, wow. Okay. Um, but yeah. So still working on that. But you've done, like you said, four books since last week. Yeah. So, so um, The Shakespeare Stealer. That's a great title. I thought it was a horrible title. It's a great title. I rated it 7.5 out of 10. And my first line that I've written down here is not a good title, <laughs> but a pretty good book. <laughs> Uh, orphan is bought at the age of seven to apprentice to a preacher apothecary. He's taught to read and write rudimentary Latin and a unique form of shorthand. He's told the shorthand is to take dictation, but soon finds that it's really to steal sermons for his master. Uh, he's uh, later sold and tasked with attending the new play Hamlet and recording every word. Interesting. Uh, the remainder of the book is centered around the company of Lord Chamberlain's men, including Shakespeare. Good fun. So, kind of historical fiction. Yeah. A little bit. Most of it's fiction, but very little yeah. historical. Uh, next was The Strangers. I rated it 6.5 out of 10. Uh, three kids find their mom in tears because three kids with the same names and birthdays, exact same birthdays, <gasps> have been kidnapped in another state. How can that happen? I mean, like three kids, the three they, that, the did, three that were kidnapped had mm -hmm. the exact same names, yeah. exact same birthdays. Do they have special powers? Um, you'll have to read to see. Because it sounds a little Umbrella Academy, e, but um, it is yeah. not Umbrella Academy, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. next was Among the Hidden, rated at seven point five out of ten. It's a dystopian society where. Uh, Third kid is raised in a society in which you are only allowed two kids. Being raised on a farm gave him a certain amount of freedom, but now the woods are being cut down and new houses are being built all around. God damn it. And he's being forced to stay in his house. And he ends up finding a kid in one of the new houses who also is a third kid. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all I'm going to say to yeah. avoid... Additional spoilers. No spoilers. But apparently that's a series that there's seven ah. or eight books in now. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the only one on audiobook. Ah. Uh, next one was... Was it good enough for you to want to pick up Yeah, an actual... I, I looked. I looked to see if they had the second. Yeah. Um, Wonder at the Edge of the World, rated 7 out of 10. Hallelujah Wonder's father was a scientist and explorer. And now the man who killed him is trying to find his cache of artifacts, including the medicine head, which whispers to her. She and her best friend, a slave boy, must escape by land and by sea with the goal of reaching Antarctica. Well, good luck. Did they? Uh, oh, no spoilers. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, so I finished, um, well, I finished House of Gold, the one I was reading the other week, and yeah, it was really good. I recommend it. I rated it four stars. And then last night... Four out of five. Four out of five. Okay. Um, going by Goodreads. Yeah, Not I, gotta, great. I gotta do the ten, because, yeah. Yeah. Um, but last night I finished The Bronte Plot by Catherine Rie. It's R-E-A-Y. So it could be mm. Ray or Rie. I don't know. It was just one that, oh, yeah. you know, was yeah. like librarian suggested that they had on a display on the wall. Okay. And I was like, yeah, that's a good title. It was kind of light and fluffy, but it was pretty fun. Um, this woman is, she sells rare books, but sometimes she's like gotten into like doing some suspicious things. like. Maybe writing an inscription from, like, one fake family member to another to make the book a little more ah. um, worth it. And yeah. it has, it's more kind of about it having a story behind it that she likes, but also, you know, raising the value of it. Um, but then she gets caught out with the, uh, these lies by her boyfriend. And this is all in the blurb. It's not a spoiler. 
her grandmother is interested in her and uh, takes her to London with her. And yeah, anything else would be spoilery. Um, I rated it a three. Um, it was a bit too light for what I usually like, yeah. um, but I enjoyed it. Um, and I finished it, you know, last night with the hopes that I would be starting the Adventure Zone graphic novel. We're yeah. on the Rockport Limited today. But I won't. <laughs> it will be here on Saturday on my birthday. But speaking of Saturday and Shakespeare, I'm very excited about what we're doing. Mm-hmm. We're going to go see Dallas Shakespeare. They are doing a stage version of Shakespeare in Love. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And it's outside. And yeah, I want, like, I show Jessica pictures on Pinterest. So, like, I want to have a real pretty, like, bougie little picnic. Uh-huh. <laughs> flowers and cheeses and stuff i don't know we'll decide that when they get here yeah i say they because our friends cody and jessica are coming up again and cody's birthday is two days after mine and three years but we always celebrate (laughs) together um and that's really great because we're both introverts and not too much attention is placed on either one of us at a time (laughs) and it's wonderful (laughs) and we like all the same things like doctor who and stuff like his 30th birthday was like a massive doctor who party and it was So anyways, that's what we've got coming up, and I'm very excited about it. Um, and you're going to take all sorts of real pretty pictures at the thing yeah. of our bougie-ass picnic with all your new we'll photography skills. We'll see how much skills. light there is. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Well, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. I'm so, excited uh, to give you your birthday presents. Uh, presents? I thought it was just one. Just one, but multiple. Ugh. <laughs> You're so confusing about presents. Although I'm honestly um taking the all the new bookshelves as a present as well because yeah. oh my yeah. gosh, it's great. Um definitely we'll show pictures on social media um once we've got it all completed. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be all this week. I think we'll have the main ones the main ones like secured <laughs> and we can uh-huh. start putting books up. Okay, speaking of social medias, I've started a couple more on the advice of podcast people on the internet. Um, I've got no say YouTube channel. I I mean, we're not filming our podcast, but I'm putting the audio up there. Mm -hmm. Um, And also a Tumblr. And so it's so many now, I'm not going to give out all our addresses and stuff. You can either search for it, you're smart people, or go to our website, fightingoverthecarcatalog.com. Where you'll find links to all of our social medias. And hey, guys, if you hadn't heard, well, for one, second Audrina still hates the first Audrina. But also, it's my birthday this week. And you know what I would love from you guys? Some ratings, or some shares, or some likes, or anything to help get the word out about our podcast. If you're listening to this right now, you obviously enjoy it. You must know some friends who love this whack shit back in the day (laughs) so yeah i was thinking we might even do some sort of giveaway um do a drawing for anybody who likes shares uh reviews or anything okay um anytime from now till the end of july we'll say so please do that and i will love you forever We're rereading the books of your childhood. So you don't have to. Bye, everybody. Bye.